F Scout Group. We followed them from their base in Drumcondra all the way up to Larch Hill, where 1,500 scouts from all over the country were converging. Here this evening, here in the Deaf Scouts, we're practicing and what they're working on at the moment is called a tripod and it's in preparation that they're going to make a table and a seat bench attached to this table and use it for eating and sitting around chatting, signing to one another and so on. So we really need to prepare and practice and train before we enter the competition in Larch Hill on Friday. And we'll stay there for the weekend. This group is specific only for deaf or hard of hearing. We do welcome hard of hearing. Anyone involved in mainstream, they're all welcome wherever they're from. There's some that do get involved with a hearing group and then maybe leave and join us. But they're more than welcome to join us. And we all work through our own language and communicate. All of our scouts were all in preparation for this Saturday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, this weekend. They're preparing project work. You're setting up altar for the fire, that's what it's called. And then plus we have a dining table behind us. You see the green shelter, it's like a shelter that we have here, putting this together, so that's what that's for. And they're doing well. The, the Dublin 191 is a unique group because most of those children, they came from four corners all over Ireland. And uh, we can get only unique at that group, we're very proud. At, at the, this moment, we're only one uh, deaf scout group in Ireland. Hopefully, we keep going because there's some uh, deaf children when they meet with their hearing scout in their local area, they find find difficult to communicate. So that's why we have a deaf scout group here. But I'm hoping and calling all the deaf scout to meet with hearing scout and to understand our deaf culture. Welcome to Larch Hill. This is the camp, this is our campsite here for our scout group. And that's my tent, that's where I sleep. And the boys' tent is over here. And the kitchen is right in the middle. And uh, right now we're setting up the table for our lunch. We have to make it really stronger at the top, I think. So they have these bars here and then they have to be tied a little bit tighter because we don't want the table to move at all. So we're going to have to make sure it's really secure. Oftentimes uh, we have to agree and sometimes agree to disagree, but we have to work together and, and make it work all, all out. So I think it's brilliant. And it's really great, all the things that we've learned to be able to put them into practice here. And it's great for building teamwork, for communication skills, for all the different experiences. It's just been brilliant. So right now, all the scouts have gone down to the obstacle course and um, they're going to be going through all the different uh, exercises that they have to do there, so that should be interesting. It's hard <laughs> because the chain moves all over the place and then the, the tires down there, they're too small for me to get through, so it was really hard work. It took a long time to get through them, but the running part and the balancing beam was no problem at all. And then I was trying it a second time and I got stuck, oh my goodness. <laughs> but the balancing beam was great. The tires were the hard part, and then I did it in two minutes, the whole course in two minutes and nine seconds. I think I came in fourth place. They're just a group. They're just a normal group of scouts. They're not unique to us, but we have groups all around the country where they may have one or two children who are deaf. If somebody demonstrates, you just follow through. You don't need to say you have to do this, you have to do that. You just demonstrate and then follow through. Very practical. Yeah, yeah it was difficult because we had to work out how to make it strong and it was really hard because you know we want we needed the light person but we had to use a little bit heavier person you know and it was a little bit loose but uh, but it, in the end I think we did really well and we got through it 
Well, we're going to be going off hiking and we'll be leaving in a few minutes at half one and we're going to be taking a two to four hour walk. Depends on how fast, of course. So we're going to be following each other. We'll be staying in a group and we're going to be going to Kilmashog. Then we're going to be going to Ferry Castle. Then we're going to Three Rock and then we'll be hopefully ending up here. We're going to be worn out by the time we get back. But, uh, you know, we're kind of used to following the map and using the compass to find where we are. So that's the plan. So hopefully it'll go well. They've really enjoyed it. They've enjoyed it so far over the weekend. So, yes, I think we can count on coming back. As well as being an area for hiking and cycling, one of the main attractions of the mountains is the tranquility here. Just a few miles from the city, you can stand in the stillness of the trees and gradually hear the symphony of birdsong. I met wildlife expert and artist Don Conroy to ask him about the animals and birds in the mountains. He first told me about his earliest memories of coming up Three Rock. Well, my very early memories was coming up here with my big brother and his friends. Of course, they didn't really want me with them because I was a little boy. Right. But it was amazing to come up here and walk.